Excellent. So now we're now we're recording. I'm I'm going to mute everybody's line. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, you should feel free to type them into the chat box, and I will answer them at the end of the webinar when we have an when we have an FAQ section. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody right now. The conference has been muted. Um, and. And so then we'll get started. Um, our presenters today are Maxine Finkelstein, who is the Chief of Staff at the Genesis Prize Foundation. Maxine currently serves, or prior to coming to the Genesis Prize Foundation, she was the Chief Operating Officer of the Birthright Israel Foundation, CEO of the Jewish Agency for Israel North America, and CEO of UIA Federations Canada. In the earlier years of her career, Maxine worked in direct service, community organization, and resource development in the Montreal Jewish community. Prior to leaving Montreal, she served as executive director of Federation CJA. And then we have Marav Fine, who is the program manager of member services here at the Jewish Funders Network. Marav develops meaningful programming to engage funders in the future of the Jewish community and works to strengthen their relationships with one another to promote the network's impact on Jewish life. Marav completed her MPA with a focus on nonprofit management and her MA in Hebrew and Judaic studies at NYU in the dual master's program for training professionals in the Jewish nonprofit field. Throughout her graduate work, she interned and consulted with many Jewish organizations, including UJ Federation of New York, Reboot, and the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York. I am Melissa Rosen, and as I mentioned at the top of our call, I am the program manager for matching grants here at the Jewish Funders Network. I joined JFN in mid-July, and I'm thrilled to be working on all aspects of JFN's matching grants initiatives, from working with funders and grantees to outreach events and everything in between. I came to JFN from UJ Federation of New York, where I spent almost 10 years in the Jewish Communal Network Commission, working with the nonprofit organizations in UJ Federation's network. During this call, we have a couple of goals. We're going to introduce you to the Avenues to Jewish Engagement for Intermarried Families Matching Grant Initiative, including the origin of this initiative through the Genesis Prize Foundation. We're going to review the matching grant initiative details, including timeline, donor and organization eligibility, and a little bit about the application process. We're going to discuss JFN and the matching grants initiatives as a whole, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Right now, though, I'm going to turn it over to Maxine to talk a little bit more about the Genesis Prize. Maxine? Thank you, Melissa. I, uh, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity, and uh, for those on the line, uh, I'm, I'm pleased you're here today, and I'll try and answer any questions you have and just begin by giving a little bit of a background on the Genesis Prize. So uh, the Genesis Prize was established uh, in 2013. It's, it's, it's quite a new initiative, and uh, the basic mission is uh, – through the prize we give, which is a million dollars given to the annual uh, annually to the laureate, uh, that we use the opportunity of the profile of the individual uh, to raise an issue of uh, significance in the Jewish world, and uh, we hope to then engage in some initiative such as this matching grants uh, to make a real change in terms of. Uh, of, of an issue which is uh, important uh, to uh, individuals and to our community collectively. Uh, we've been fortunate in the first two years that the laureates chose to uh, not take the award uh, and to uh, encourage us to use it for something that would be meaningful. And, and with the first laureate, who was Michael Bloomberg, uh, the funds uh, were used for social entrepreneurship initiatives given as grants to individual teams around the world. And those are just starting off right now, and we're seeing some excellent results. Uh, with Michael Douglas, we decided to go a little bit of a different route, and he was very interested in addressing the issue of uh, engaging intermarried families and 
uh, young people who were from backgrounds similar to his own. Uh, as you may know, Michael Douglas's uh, mother wasn't Jewish, and uh, he's, he's married to a woman now who's not Jewish, but his children have chosen Judaism, and along with them, uh, so has he become much more engaged. Um, and I, I say much more, I, I would say probably for, uh, he, he's become engaged and it's really the first time he's come to care and be involved with his Judaism. So as much as he is bringing along something uh, with the prize, and we, we hope as a, uh, as a result of this matching fund will have a real impact, uh, so is this making a difference to Michael Douglas, and it's, it's really given him an opportunity to get involved in a different way. We were also very fortunate to have another donor who uh, uh, provided us with an additional uh, gift that we've uh, attributed to this fund. Uh, so we're starting off with $1.65 million, uh, which is more than the initial million dollar award, hoping to generate $3.3 million when matched. And uh, if, if you're following Michael Douglas's path on this journey, I just wanna say, you know, he, he's been quite visible with it, and he's really hoping long-term to have an impact. Uh, he just spoke uh, at, uh, for Kol Nidre service at his congregation. Uh, he's going to be speaking at the upcoming URJ conference and uh, is planning to go on some campuses to speak with Natan Sharansky early in 2016. So these also give us opportunities to promote what we're trying to achieve together. So I, I'm thankful to JFN for being our partner in this and giving us the opportunity to work together. And I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Okay, great. Thank you, Maxine. If you have questions for Maxine, please type them in the chat box. And again, as I said, we'll address them at the end of the call. Um, JFN, as as this as working with Samantha, who is on vacation, we are also grateful for the opportunity to work with the Genesis Prize Foundation. It's been um, it's been a great experience so far, and we are looking forward to seeing all the applications that come in. Um, I've moved the slides forward. I want to thank Genesis again for developing this infographic. It's a really one shot one shot visual of how the how our process is going to work, and I will be sending the slides after the call, so don't worry about frantically trying to zoom in or anything. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of the points in the graphic, but for now, um, the high points are these. Specific gifts for the program will be matched, either paid or pledged can be matched. Um, organizations can submit multiple cases excuse me, organizations can submit multiple applications, as can funders. Applications will be reviewed by representatives of the Genesis Prize Foundation. Gifts of between $25,000 to $150,000 will be matched one-to-one. -one. And eligible organizations can receive up to $150,000 in matching funds. So those are just the first couple of points about the match as a whole. So this, this grant initiative officially launched on August 31st to a lot of interest. Um, we had a similar call to this one for interested organizations on September 9th, which had almost 100 participants on it. And applications are due by March 15th, 2016. Um, as well as the logistics timeline, we also have a very robust events calendar. There were way too many of them to list on the slide. It got very, very crowded. So I encourage you all to visit the calendar page of our Matching Grants website, and you'll be able to see all the different events that we're doing, particularly for funders. There's um, upcoming, we have two, we're partnering on two events here in New York, one in Boston. We're doing donor outreach events in LA and Denver at the beginning of November, one in London at the beginning of December, and a afternoon of learning here in New York on December 10th. If you have any questions about those, please feel free to contact me, and there's lots, lots more information on our calendar page. So just moving right along, 
I'm going to move on to sort of the nuts and bolts of elegi what looks what eligibility looks like for this grant. And because we're talking, um, many of you are funders. Um, these are the points that we're pushing in terms of eligibility. So the grant is open to be matched for gifts that are either new or existing. So if it's a new program, if you've never given to the program before, or the program is completely new, those are considered new gifts. Um, the minimum gift is $25,000, and we're asking that any, any donor that's U.S.-based either is already or will become a member of JFN, and we'll talk more about that later on in the call. If you've already been giving to the grantee organization or program that you're looking to support in the past, if you've been giving over the past five years, we're looking for you to increase your previous gift by at least twofold, so by at least double. Um, that gift should also, that doubled gift should also be $25,000 or more, and we'll also have a discussion about JFN membership. Organizations have a little bit, have a few more requirements, um, including the ones that are on your screen. Um, they should be, should have a mission to support and enhance engage, Jewish engagement for intermarried couples, children, and individuals who come from these families. A minimum three-year history, although projects can be new. Um, an operating budget of at least $100,000 per year, at least one full-time staff member. Um, demonstrated financial stability and agree and organizations will agree to take part in the evaluation of a three year evaluation of the matching grant impact. Um, the note at the bottom is about organizations there are two types of funding that are available there's general operating support for organizations who um, work specifically around the issue of engaging intermarried families. And then there's programmatic support for organizations who have a broader mission but are developing program, either new or bolstering pro existing programs to engage intermarried families, couples, and children. Along with the eligibility criteria, we also have a set of desirability criteria, um, including, as you see, mission alignment, the size of your organ an organization, um, ongoing versus short-term projects, partnerships and collaborations, and an organization's capacity to absorb and expend matching funds. Um, at, so, there we're really um, we're really passionate about the idea that these matching funds are going to organizations that can really execute them and are an organizations that are thinking about how to engage the community in new ways. So please keep that in mind as you're talking to the organizations you work with um, about how to develop program, how to take advantage of this opportunity. So on to the application. Um, apologize if I'm speeding through, but it feels like we're just moving right along. Um, so about the application, the previous the previous webinar talked a lot about the organization, the application process for organizations. At this point, I'm going to talk more about the application process for funders. Um, the onus is on. We're asking the organizations to really fill out the written application. It's an online application, but part of that will be um, the inclusion of funder information, including the funder's name, contact information, and how much the size of the gift that the funder has pledged. Um, once all of that information, once the entire application is submitted, JFN will be in touch with every donor who has been identified for more information, including what's on your screen, so your preferred contact information, um, information about your gift, so really verifying the amount of the gift, um, the funder's giving history to the organization or project, a brief description about why the don a brief conversation about why you as a donor would want to support this organization or project, and then a conversation about 
um, JFN membership, whether you're a member or not, whether you're up for – if you are, if your membership is up for renewal, et cetera. Um, and I'm, I'm going to throw that to Marav in a bit to go into those details. Um, these are some important points that – people like to know. Um, any information that is submitted by a funder will only be available to JFN and the Genesis Prize Foundation. The organization you apply with will not have access to any of your information, and we will be in touch with you throughout the process, one, if we need more information from you, and two, um, as we go through the review process, you'll hear from us, most likely me. Um, that your application is under review, where we stand in terms of the review process, and obviously ultimately when decisions are made. At this point, I'm going to throw to Marav and ask her to talk to us a little bit about JFN. Sure, great. Thank you so much, Melissa. Um, so my job here is I'm Program Manager for Member Services, which essentially means that I am the, the individual responsible for creating programming that will take you from conference to conference. Um, I spend a lot of time working with David Ezer, who runs, our, um, who runs our conference every year, which this year will happen in April uh, in San Diego. And what I like to do is find out what it is that he's going to be um, engaging with a conference, what are the big hot topics of the moment, and making sure that we're definitely touching on those in our web events and our in-person convenings throughout the year. Um, another thing that we've been doing this year that we've piloted is connecting all of our programming to our Jewish Funders Network values. Um, those values, you can take a look at them on our website. They're universal values, but also Jewish values. Um, and so by doing that, we're integrating our programming with a Jewish spine uh, as we move from, from conference to conference, making sure that we're using these as touch points. Um, in terms of membership to the organization, uh, members give um, a minimum $25,000 a year annually, um, up to um, upwards of $20 million. Um, in order to become a member, there are a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can contact me directly. Uh, my email is marav at jfunders.org. I'm sure that's in something that Melissa has sent you. She's very thorough. Um, another, another way is you can do it through our website. You can contact us through our website to find out um, if you're eligible. Typically, we'll get back in touch with you and talk about um, what organization, what your organization is giving at what level, interest areas. That way we can also tailor programming not just to the values that we believe are important, but also to your specific interest areas, be they you know, education, obviously, interfaith work, etc. Um, and you can also contact our colleague uh, Samantha Anderson. She is the Senior Director for Member Services, and she is an expert at this as well. Um, Melissa, let me know if I missed anything. No, I think you got it. Okay. Um, the one note I'll make is that I also, as um, part of the membership team for matching grants, most likely you'll be in touch with me about membership, but Marav is an excellent resource and is really the veteran of our team at this point. So you can be in touch with any and all of us. Um, but don't be surprised if you hear from me instead of her. Um, at this point... I'm going to open this up for questions. Um, if you have any, please make sure that you um, either raise your hand through the web portal or type them into the chat. Um, otherwise, you can look at our Frequently Asked Questions page. The website is on the screen. And I am available for any questions that you may want to ask offline. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask? It does not appear that anybody has. Okay. Sort of give it a minute. Well, it, it appears that We've been very thorough. I hope we've been very thorough. Um, 
it appears that nobody really has any questions for me right, or any of us right now. But if you think of them, again, please contact me. My number on the screen is 212-726-0177, extension 1216. Or, oh, thank you, Adam. My email is melissa at jfunders.org. Um, Adam just asked, can multiple organizations apply with one JFN donor? Um, I mean, Adam, if I'm – hold on. Adam, if I'm understanding your question as in a joint project, yes. Well, kind of. If multiple organizations are going to apply, they each need, they each need to bring a separate donor to the table and the total gift can total $25,000. So for instance, if you as a JCC would like to partner with a Hillel, you can each bring a donor. You should each bring you can each bring a donor to the table. And it, so then the burden of the the $25,000 gift can be split between you. Um, Maxine, do you have anything else you want to add about that? I would just add that we would certainly encourage organizations to uh, work in concert to in initiate projects. Sometimes two organizations have more capacity together. It, it, it can also bring a larger uh, constituency and uh, you know, may just have more creativity by brainstorming around things. So yeah, I, I think it's great if organizations partner together uh, to do this and if funders partner uh, in working with organizations. Absolutely. Um, anybody else? Oh, Marilyn. If the interface pro – Marilyn's question, I'm not sure if everyone can see it. If the interface program exists within a larger institution, can it be new donors to the interface program even if they are long standing donors to the overall organization? Yes. That is absolutely fine. Um, we're looking at new gifts as either the donor is new or the pro or the gift to the or the program is new. So either way, you're either way you're fine. Okay, well, and I know that p typing takes a few minutes. Um, but if nobody else has anything, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Um, this recording will be posted to the Intermarried Families Matching Grant website um, in the res on the resources page, so you can always go back and revisit it. I will send out the slides later to, by the end of business today. And I want to thank Maxine and Marav for presenting with me, um, for providing some really, really useful information. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa. Bye, everyone.